Welcome back, everybody. My guest tonight changed late night comedy as the host of the Arsenio Hall Show. He now stars in the new movie, Coming to America, a sequel to the original. Please welcome to a late show, Arsenio Hall. Arsenio, thanks for being here, man. Well, thank you for having me, sir. I, I guess I planned on meeting you one day, but not this way. I, you in New York, wherever you are on Zoom, and me sitting in front of Rick Ross's house. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, well, I feel a strong urge as somebody who watched late night TV a lot. I have a strong urge to go ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> when I see you. Do you? Do people still do that to you everywhere you go? Yes. You know, I'll forever be that guy from Cleveland who brought the bark to late night. I taught dogs to bark, Stephen. But, you know, when my son was little, it was crazy because we'd walk through malls. And when you're two, nobody prepared you in heaven for the fact that people will bark at your father. And for a long time, he just got used to it. But one day he did ask, well, why do they bark? There are a lot of people. I have people who say, woot, woot. And they make different noises. A lot of people don't even realize it's a dog, Stephen. But the dog pound, how could they not know? I swear to you, twice a week, someone either says on Twitter, woot, woot, or <laughs> woo, woo, woo. And that's a Jeffrey Osborne song. Can you woo, woo, woo? That is a whole different guy. But at least they're barking at their father in a friendly way. It's all affectionate. Yes. Oh, yeah. I I've always been thankful for that. People who confront me, it's always something positive. It's, it, it may be annoying, but never mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, oh I didn't expect that reaction. Oh, oh. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, it's nice. Yeah, I, that must be nice. So, uh, I want to I wanna, I wanna, uh, talk about the new movie. Uh, I got a lot. Of, I got a million questions for you. But first, I want to know, how are you doing? How, how are you and your family during COVID? It's, it's, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but how has the tunnel been for you? Wow. It's been incredible. First of all, if your relationship can last through this, you know you have a good relationship because a lot of relationships have fallen by the wayside during this. It's, it's hard when you can't leave and you're just with the one you love. So me and my girl are doing great. My son, um, he tests himself and comes to visit dad sometimes because he doesn't want to kill dad. And um, That's nice. my mom... I'm spending a lot of money on yarn and weed. Of course, weed for me and yarn for her. I had to find her a hobby, and um, she's making hats. Oh, that, like what kind of hats? Are we talking like, like knit caps and stuff like that? Y yeah, she, she's made this year 79 hats. And here's how crazy it is. You know, I, I've done 40 interviews this week, but my mother made a hat for you. And it's. I think she saw you with Anderson Cooper and anybody she sees with Anderson Cooper she loves, which I think is a mistake as a rule of thumb. But uh, <laughs> but for some reason, she's a huge fan and she, I'm gonna send, I'm gonna mail it to you. She actually made you a hat. Can I, do you have it there? Can you, can you show me? Yeah, oh, oh I have it. Uh, we boxed it up and we're gonna send it. Apparently there's a, a, a Bob Mas Mackie kiosk at her house. I don't know how she got this box, <laughs> but. Um, it's a sparkly glitter box, and she made you this hat, and she put her name on it. I'm uh, honored. Please tell your mother it. I'm honored. <laughs> she, her name is Annie Hall, but she put Annie M. Hall because she's still mad at Woody Allen. She thinks uh, he owes her money or something. A lot, you know? a lot of people are mad at him these days. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, let's let's get to the heat of the meat here. You and I have something in common that just not a lot of people do, is that hosting a network late night show, the Arsenio Hall, Hall show, the first time it was on, what was the what was the run? Is it 89 and 95 or something? What was the first run? Yes, that it was like a 6-year run, and then I stepped away and and had a kid and did a lot of wonderful things, uh, not much work, and the second I did a reboot that lasted a year. And I don't know how you do what you do, man. You, like, you you did a, a joke last night, a butt-dialing from Mars joke. I was dying in my home, and I'm like, but how is he pacing himself? How is he timing himself? He's there with, like, three white guys. I don't know how he does it. Two. This. Two white guys. <laughs> and they're, and they're, they're, they're almost as white as I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, trust me, the butt-dialing joke would have killed at the Apollo. 
Good. <laughs> Good. Do you? Okay, I want to talk about how that show started. So, okay. what? Where? Where? Did, first of all, you were up against. I don't know. You said you weren't really in competition with Johnny, but you were opposite Johnny. You know, the undisputable king of all. And oh, what, yeah. what? What did that feel like to start that show? I mean, what were the what were the butterflies like? It, it was. It was. It was amazing, because initially, you know how late night can get. I thought that I would no longer be his guy, you know? I had met him. We had talked about magic because we Hold both on. were magicians. I got to show this photo of you. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yes. look at the laugh you're getting out of Johnny Carson, man. Hey, that's what every comic wants. If you can make Johnny Carson go back, that's what every comic wants. And during the commercial, like I said, I was a magician as a kid. So we talked about that, and he did a coin trick for me, and he did something that we don't do now. He was actually smoking. Oh, yeah and uh, put the cigarette under the desk. And it was a great experience. And um, Ed McMahon would call me sometimes. Johnny would tell Ed to call me and give me names. Yes, wow. yes. And I didn't wait, have wait, a wait. cell phone. I'm sorry, I stepped on that a little bit. Johnny would say, tell Ed to call you to give you name, well, like for guests or something? Yeah, like, like, you know, also, like sometimes Johnny would come across someone he thought was really great, but he didn't discover talent. Me being the young guy, I would, put on a new Mariah Carey or a new Will Smith and they would give me names like they gave me Usher Raymond once because I guess uh, Ed knew him from Star Search. So to know that not only he doesn't hate me, but he tries to help me because the paths were so so divided, so, so distinctly divided. You know, you knew who a Johnny guest was and you knew who an Arsenio guest was. Are you telling me that Johnny Carson told Ed McMahon to tell Arsenio Hall to book Usher? Yes, and I think uh, he said, make sure he knows about Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story. I had a story. Is it true that you had Will Smith on and he got pitched the Fresh P Prince? backstage? Yes. Uh, Will would stop by sometimes just to hang out. My green room was like this incredible clubhouse. I, I was like the CNN of hip hop. Everybody would gather there. There was no Twitter. I was the black bird. There was no blue bird. And guys would hang out. And once Quincy said, when Will comes by, because I told Quincy he's there all the time. He said, when Will comes by, I'd love to pitch something to him. And at some point, we put them in a empty dressing room. Benny Medina, Will Smith, uh, Will's friend Charlie, I think, was there. Ir irrelevant to the story, probably to you. And Quincy Jones. And then they took it to NBC, the opposing network, and uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air happened. Holy cow. We have to take a quick break. Uh, but when we come back, I will ask Arsenio about his new movie coming to America and ask him how he met Eddie Murphy and how the first movie came about.